fact number three, the tomb of Jesus was empty. So Jesus lived, Jesus died, and he was buried, but that tomb, what happened there? Is it a fact of history that that tomb was empty? The Bible writers say that the tomb was empty, but that's not the only testimony to the empty tomb. Oh, is it not? Because as far as I understand it, that is the only evidence you have for an empty tomb or for a tomb to begin with. Paul just says that Jesus was buried. Where was he buried? I have no idea. I think most likely in, in my own mythicist view of things, I think that Paul considered Jesus to have been buried in the heavens. Um, and this wouldn't be all that weird for a Jew to believe, considering that the, well, it's called Revelation of Moses, but also could be understood as the life of Adam and Eve. Uh, both of those are, are Jewish texts that kind of illuminate um, Jewish theology um, around this time. And uh, they, uh, they actually place Adam's uh, body being buried in the third heaven, which is also where Eden is. So Eden was never like a physical place on the earth as the Jews understood it. They understood the uh, uh, Eden to exist in the third heaven, uh, which uh, multiple levels of heaven is a very common thing in Jewish theology. I, I, that's what I personally believe uh, that, that Paul thought, but you could also make... Um, even if you, if you don't want to go the mythicist route, um, you could say that Paul just said he was buried. That could be like a, a, a mass grave kind of situation, uh, where he was buried. It doesn't say too, but let's, let's see what kind of evidence he has. In fact, there was a Jewish writing going around early after the resurrection of Jesus that was explaining the empty tomb. Oh, no shit there, Kyle, but I mean... Uh, this is great evidence. Not long after the resurrection. Okay, so let's just assume that Jesus died in the early 30s. So that would place his resurrection in the early 30s if he actually did resurrect. Now, if we're talking about pretty quick after the resurrection, I would expect, you know, something that dates to around the time of Paul uh, talking about stealing the body or uh, anything like that or, or the tomb being empty rather. And that writing said that a godless and lawless heresy had sprung up from Jesus, a Galilean, whom we crucify, this Jewish writing said, but his disciples stole him by night from the tomb where he was laid when unfastened from the cross. And now deceive men by asserting that he's risen from the dead and ascended to heaven. Oh my goodness, an early Jewish writing that says all of this? This would be good evidence about at least people thinking that he was buried in a tomb and that his body wasn't there. If it's an early Jewish writing, is it early enough to be independent of everything else? Well, we just need to figure out where this came from. So let's see. So I did the legwork on this, uh, just in case you guys are wondering. This comes from a dialogue with Trifo that was written by early church father, Justin, uh, 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 Justin Martyr. He fabricated a dialogue with a Jew discussing Christianity in 155 to 160. This is shortly after the resurrection. This is 120 years at least after the supposed resurrection written by an early church father. And on top of all that, it's fucking fake. Ya bitch. <laughs> he doesn't, he does this a couple times in this. He doesn't cite where he gets his information. And it's because if you actually looked up the information surrounding this, you would get dialogue with Trifo written between 155 to 160, and it's a fabricated account of Justin Martyr having a conversation with Trifo the Jew. How much more dishonest can you be than to make up information like this? Because it's not made up that this exists, it does, but you make up that it's an early Jewish writing. You further uh, lie by omission by about where it came from, who wrote it, and what the motivations would have been. You also lied by omission by not saying that this is completely fabricated under the understanding that the Gospels were considered historical at this time. Holy shit, but like, 
Where, why the fuck are you an apologist? You're the worst apologist. Now notice what that writing is doing. They're forced to admit the tomb is empty. Because Justin Martyr wrote it and forced Trifo to admit it, dipshit. That's what Peter was doing on the day of Pentecost when he stood in Jerusalem and he talked about the resurrected Christ. And basically he was challenging his listeners to go and look at the empty tomb. And what you will find is the tomb and it's empty. Nobody challenged that of anybody when the Gospels were being written. You can't give me some fabricated dialogue with a, a, a Jew uh, and try to persuade me that that's what Jews were actually saying at the time. Especially, um, you know, during the time that uh, Paul was writing all of his shit. Like, fucking come on, dude. Jesus lived. Jesus died. And the tomb where Jesus was buried was empty. None of that is substantiated with evidence. Uh, there's, we have no idea where the tomb would be. Uh, there's never been a good indication of any tomb that Jesus, Jesus's body would have inhabited. Right now, there are a few venerated uh, like tomb locations, but there's no definitive location of this. So there's just no way for us to know if Jesus was even ever into.